With NFR Extra, we're going to take you behind the scenes in a way you've never heard before. Every two weeks, you're going to hear personal conversations with the icons and personalities that make up the world's richest and most prestigious rodeo. NFR Extra. All dirt, all rodeo, all year. That's right. This is our fourth episode of NFR Extra, and I'm your host, Nevada Caldwell, where it's all dirt, all rodeo, all All year. year. And this is Bo Gardner, excited to kick this one off with you, Envy, and a few of our good friends to talk about the 2019 Junior World Finals and other current news on the road to the Wrangler NFR. Well, let's see what we got on tap here. Yes. Uh, well, we are switching gears to the Junior Circuit on the episode for Bo's Bull and talking to rodeo announcers Annie Seiler and Steve Godert, the guys who bring the magic together for the Junior World Finals. Envy will also talk to four-time world champ Tough Cooper, who joins us on the show to talk about his influence this year with the Junior World Finals and how he's feeling about adding a fifth world title to his huge trophy case. <laughs> yeah, it is. Right, he's got, it's got to be gigantic. Um, and after that, we get Maria Prekerji's interviews with the great Sean Davis on what's next after building the NFR Empire. We also talk with Miss Nellie Miller and her guest, James Miller, <laughs> <laughs> about the tradition behind the Red Bluff Roundup and Nellie's quest to win and repeat as a world champion. It's going to be a good one. Yes, you're going to like it. Hi, I'm 23-time world champion cowboy Trevor Brazil, and you're listening to NFR Extra. Hi, I'm Tyler Pearson, world champion steer wrestler, and you're listening to NFR Extra. Hi, I'm two-time world champion Tim O'Connell, and this is NFR Extra. Hi, I'm Speed Williams, eight-time world champion team roper, and this is NFR Extra. This is Bo's Bull, the rodeo news of the week. Steve Godert and Andy Seiler have been covering the Junior World Finals in Las Vegas for the past three years. Seiler has covered all kinds of events from the pro circuit to the College National Finals Rodeo and including PBR. We also saw him in Rodeo Houston and the last place we went, Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi. Goder, the 2018 Rookie of the Year by the Livestock Marketing Association and 2019 Bid Calling Champion for the Montana Auctioneer Association. Pretty talented guy, man. Man, I can imagine his uh, his buckle case probably looks pretty good, too. Got a great voice. <laughs> Together, these guys are a dynamic duo for 10 days in December during the Junior World Finals. I have to say that we are very fortunate to have such talented announcers for our Junior World Finals. Bo? Steve Godert and Andy Seiler, welcome to the show, Cowboys. Thank you, Mr. Bell. <laughs> Thank you. This is Andy. Hey, Hi. Andy. Hey, I have to say, I do have to say this. Um, we are very fortunate to have such talented announcers for our Junior World Finals to the point of... When we proposed this to our producers for the Junior World Finals, they all had announcers lined up, and they were stuck with them. And once they heard Andy Seiler and Mr. Steve Godert, they're like, we're good with those guys. They did a fantastic job, and uh, they, they know our sport. They love our kids. Their hearts are in it. They have kids of their own. So this is something that uh, just became a perfect fit, and uh, we're very honored and fortunate to have you guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, thank you. It's definitely cool to be part of. Yeah, well, you guys do a great job, man. You guys are very entertaining. <laughs> yeah, you do make it fun. Very important. <laughs> well, that's what it's all about. I mean, yeah. So I here real quick, I'm going to throw a question, and, and what I'll do is I'll kind of focus on one of you guys or, or the other. So, Andy, you cover a lot of rodeos. I've read a lot about you used to compete. Some things you've done along the way, but you fell in love with announcing. Yeah, that's right. I read your bio. Um, And um, (laughs) you were the one. (laughs) So, (laughs) what? And and you obviously you tour a lot through the whole season. What? Just give us one. one, What's what's one of your not necessarily favorite, but one of one of one of your favorites that you like to work at? One of your favorite rodeos, venues, like the overall everything that comes with that that package of of uh, where you get to go, whatever city it is. What's one of the your favorite ones you like to attend or, or work at it really more. It's, than 
it's so hard to pick one. I mean, I, I hate to sound cliche, but I mean, you do. There's so many different unique. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh well. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Uh, you know, there's there's so many different venues in rodeo. I mean, from Houston, where they have really big crowds, to uh, Coldwell, Idaho, where they sell a lot of beer and they have really really loud fans. Um, you know, to Estes Park, Colorado, where you're in the middle of the mountains. Um, it's it's really, really difficult to pick one, um, you know, but I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel really, really blessed to be able to go to some of these places, but I I take a lot of pride in the fact that a lot of the events that I get to work, they, they raise money for youth, and they raise money for kids in agriculture. And obviously, being involved with you guys at the Junior World Finals and growing up in agriculture, I, I mean, those are things I'm very passionate about, and I'm glad that there are organizations out there that, help grow those two initiatives oh that's great no, that's cool that makes sense uh goder like obviously you let's i know you do rodeos but you also do auctions right a couple of uh, accolades yeah there I, just, I, I just i hate to interrupt you but i'm just going to say my favorite place to be is las vegas so <laughs> i don't want to you know name drop any other committees or anything but las vegas that's where i like to be at that's my favorite spot your personality fits Did you in have there. another question for me <laughs> <laughs> Steve, they already hired us for this year. Um, yeah, just, we, just, we do have yeah. the signed agreements. So. Okay. The anxious drive. <laughs> hey, so if you were to get other offers, which that could be very real yeah, absolutely. in the near, near future, yep. um, we would hate to lose you, but we would hope you would want to make that step up. I, I don't I know. Think I, think, towards, I think, yeah, directed towards Dandy. <laughs> so stop. <laughs> No, I mean, I'll be honest. It's what every kid that has ever watched a rodeo for 20 seconds dreams of. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's something that I grew up doing when I was roping the dummy by myself in my backyard. You know, I was talking myself up like it's the 10th round and I'm trying to win a world title. And if you're holding a microphone or you're inside a clown barrel or, you know, you're picking up Bronx, I mean, you want to work the National Finals Rodeo. I mean, it's... It's what everybody in this business dreams about. And um, it, it's it's been so highly contested in the past, and there's been so so few people do it mm -hmm. that it's almost like winning a green jacket at the Masters. Yeah. I mean, it's it's that coveted because it's that hard to get it. Yeah. So you're saying that if, let's just say, Mooney, uh, Corley, any of these guys that are covering the NFR all of a sudden happen to get food poisoning that night, <laughs> Oh my goodness! We actually have two guys that could fill in that night, right? Is that would that be uh, safe to say that something could happen? For I'm going to sure. give it yeah, every no, ounce I mean, of energy I've got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Goder? Need to help with that food. Yeah, if you need to help with that food poisoning thing or whatever. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you you have a few good cows in mind, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the cool thing about is the opportunity uh, to work with Andy for this deal and he and i first started talking i said you know what Andy? like this whole entire deal is it's a format that is like no other because it's essentially four or five performances a day you know for the junior world finals and it i mean it is it's long you have to be entertaining you can't just pour the throttle the but uh the the difficult part about the announcing aspect of it is you know you look at a lot of other talent like stand-up comedians they have so much time to rehearse and they go to different places and they try things that are out and things that are new. As far as the announcing side is you really don't have a lot of opportunity to try new things except for in front of a live audience. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. something that you get an immediate response of whether something went over well and something went over, you know, not so well. But the thing about the kids, you have to be especially fragile on that because there's, I mean, that eliminates some of the aspects of rodeo, which, you know, the beer consumption, the late nights or whatever, you can have a little bit of fun playing with things like that. But when you're talking about the kids and really highlighting the, the, the next generation of rodeo athletes, you have to be fairly uh, restricted with a lot of the, you know, I mean, it's not just like, hey, that's how we do it. It's whatever. <laughs> so that's something where, where, you know, where it's really cool. Like you said at the beginning, you know, we both have kids and we both mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, a good opportunity to, to be a part of rodeo in different aspects and production agriculture. Um, but it's really, it's really a unique deal and it's really fun. But yeah, if the opportunity ever came up to advance past that, I don't think that Andy or myself would, uh, would hesitate 
too terribly long to capitalize off that. Fantastic. Well, I think the NFR would be just fine. Yeah, I think it'd be in good hands. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Covering the Junior World Finals, like you guys said, it's, it's, it's 10 long days, five days rough stock, five days timed events, and guess what? We're with pole bending, which makes it even longer. Another 40 contestants. Mm. There will be five days. We'll start at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, Ms. Kelly Kaminsky is uh, adding this new event. Uh, we will have her uh, on a later episode to discuss it in detail, but, you know, the goal of doing all this is is having kind of the the girl versus guy. So uh, we'll have three events that will be very attractive for the women and and the, those contestants, and 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 they're going to be all a part of it. So ten long days, guys. How how do you prepare yourselves? How do you 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 get yourselves up every day to 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 give it and deliver the shows that you do? I think you have to pace yourself more than anything. Uh, I mean, and understand that uh, the reason you're there is is for the kids mm -hmm. you, you know I, I mean and i i think watching it now this uh, going into my third year i mean when you see some of these young men and women graduate and go into the professional ranks and have success like uh, shad mayfield was a tie down roper that we saw do really really well uh, yeah. and then in february i saw him in san angelo and he ties a calf in seven and then giving these these young men and women serious opportunities to test themselves and then they're prepared once they go to the professional ranks yeah mm. yeah interesting now i this is something we haven't bridged the gap. and i i know andy you've come on uh just recently in the past few years but go you've been around doing the junior side over here at the convention center for quite a while is there anyone that we've seen that's now competing in the nfr or close to it that you've seen bareback saddle anything i uh, and I, you know what i found roping um as Andy mentioned, there's a lot of talent, and that thing is just absolutely full of the talent. It's yep. hard on the rough stock side of it um, to really have a good judge because there are so many different opportunities. Like on the bull riding side, you'll see some good bull riders that might try to go in a different direction other than the PRCA and competing for the NFR. Um, the team roping, and I tell you, and even for the time that Andy's been here uh, co-announcing this with me for the last few years, uh, the steer wrestling and the Oof. team roping. Like yeah. I remember Jay Corco came up to, to us and he was standing on the booth behind us. He goes, there's kids I've never even heard of that rope really good here. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of one of those things like in the team roping side of it is you watch, there's so much talent out there and this does, does give them a platform to kind of be highlighted on and to travel and to go to Las Vegas. And it is like, a, it, it is like a rehearsal run. You can go there, you can go, you know, do your four days, your five days, whatever it is that we're doing there. And it's kind of like, a, you know, it's like, mm, is this what you really want to do? Mm -hmm. So as far as immediate contestants, I don't know of anyone. I know that that Bradley Miller is going to be a rock star yeah. before too long. Yeah. And we've seen him win the all-around. And, I mean, that guy, and he, that's a little phenomenon. Um, but there's kids like that out there. And so that's kind of the neat thing is, as far as the ability to watch some of these younger kids compete is that, man, Remember that name because that's yeah. going to be one that yeah, really. You know, this year I mean, we I mean, actually I, we actually had one of our our barrel racers. So if you win oh, that's uh, right. the junior world finals, you automatically advance to the semi rounds at the American in Fort Worth. Yep. So she was able to work herself into Dallas Stadium. So I, you know, she didn't yeah. win it, but she did make it that far. The opportunity to win the million dollars, and that goes back to you know being able to compete at the. Yep in Las Vegas with, mm -hmm. you know, for five days and Kelly Kaminsky bringing those girls here. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, it's a pretty stellar, a stellar group of kids. And one of the great things about that is, you know, and I, I know that uh, all of the contestants at the Wrangler national finals rodeo, they, they have all the autographs set up and they have to interact. They have to talk, they have to, you know, visit with their fans. And you see these kids kind of starting to get that too. You know, mm -hmm. like we, you look at the background and you see all the cutouts and so they have a little a little taste of like, all right, there, there I am, you know, now I got to do what I came here to do. So I think that it's good also in training the future professional athletes of rodeo that there's more to just the in arena side of it. Yep. Yeah. So are any of your kids ready to, to, to step up and go to that level? Andy. Andy. Not mine. Nope. <laughs> no, they, 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 
I mean, I, I love my children, but uh, my my son loves building Legos, and and he's got to practice a little bit more. But y'all better watch out when my when my daughter can ride by herself. She's she's going to be running barrels, toting two pistols. Uh, yeah. She is. She's meaner than a snake. I'm scared. <laughs> and what side of the does that come from? Your wife or you? <laughs> no, it, it. I think it's just a bad mix. Like it was a. It was a. A night where we maybe drank a little too much wine, and when it all came together, it was no. like, Katie, bar the door. Here she comes. <laughs> Threw there some tequila in that wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. I don't want to limit my options. I don't know. Wine, tequila, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> I, there was, um, this is last, uh, yeah, it was last year. There was the kid, and hopefully you guys remember this guy. We wrote about him in the, uh, in the, uh, the blog about um the junior world, world finals he was the kid that uh competed he had actually won in the little league little little league world series championship and then he was a champion was it steer wrestler do you guys know i'm talking about that kid that that uh pulled that off no mm-hmm. man i'm just i'm just i feel like right if i now. said yes i might be lying but uh i remember that there was a there was a couple of kids in the bios there that and i guess it is the one kid and that's kind of the neat thing is that you know when you go through that many contestants we do ask them in advance to write some information down. I remember. Well, you don't remember your information on 740 different contestants? <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's it, so easy. I mean, <laughs> we run Slack yeah. all day for oh, 10 days. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason why I bring that I'll up. I'll tell you is, what was really cool. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. no, no. You go ahead. You go ahead. We'd love to hear what you're saying. Well, yeah. I, I just. Well, you were talking about stats, and, and I there's a kid I wanted to mention because the team rope is different because there's two different divisions. And we had a 10-year-old win both divisions. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. he was going up against 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, and a 10-year-old wins both of them. Wow. Um, I mean, oh. you know, so if you want to talk about news traveling, when I came home, there were people in Florida asking me about the kid from Arizona that won both team roping divisions. You know, so it's just yeah. it just kind of tells you what kind of roots this thing is planning. Well, and that, too, we saw that two years ago at the barrel racing, too. Is, you know, it was the 16 and under that uh, that won the, I mean, the fastest time and the time in the average, and it was, you know, one of the younger girls. So that's kind of the neat thing is you look at the, the level of competition that's there, like Andy's saying, it's, I mean, it, it's pretty impressive. I mean, that's, and it's one of those deals, too, to where I think that this has got enough momentum that it's kind of a standalone event almost by itself mm-hmm. where, you know, mm-hmm. what where are you going? What are you doing? It's no, we're going to Vegas. I mean, that's there's. I was in Bozeman, Montana, uh, and I was walking around. and I saw one of the moms wearing a, a, a uh, one of the coats and nice. some of the swag. I'm like, mm-hmm. ah! <laughs> I didn't. I ran up to her and asked if she wanted my autograph. And she <laughs> thought I was. Uh, she thought I was Andy. Like, oh, Andy do, do, do you know who I am? Oh, no. <laughs> well, wait. She goes, "Are you Andy Siler?" <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> no, I'm just Steve. Oh man, yeah, sorry. I'm the other guy. <laughs> hey, so yeah, I'm the other guy. <laughs> what, <laughs> all right. Well, you guys, is any rodeos you're coming this summer? Are you going to see some of this junior circuit? Is there anything that Andy, you going to see any of this or go to? Yeah, that that Shad that Shad Mayfield we talked about. Uh, he's from Clovis, New Mexico, and and I'll be there in a month. And um, I I really think, and and I think Steve will agree because he. He really paid close attention to that tie down open. Um, Shad Mayfield and Haven uh, Haven Megid was another one of those kids. I mean, they 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 walked in and Steve and I looked at each other and they're like, "Wait, these kids are how old?" Because some of them had like, I mean, it's it's easy to have bigger hands than me, but when Steve <laughs> says somebody looks like a man, you know, I mean, you got to respect that. Right? Yeah. That's legit yeah. coming yeah. from Steve. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's a marine. I'm I'm a peanut farmer. You know, we're supposed to be small. <laughs> So we we uh, <laughs> they were tying down some extra calves and Andy and I you know said hey oh yeah for sure we'll help and it was the eighteen and under or nineteen and under whichever category that was that were tying them down and we ran out there to go untie and I mean I couldn't hardly I was like oh my gosh this thing just got tied by a full grown human being and I was like trying yeah. to get them I'm like you know you got a skin let me your knife it sucks but it, yeah. I mean and those kids. They're playing for keeps. Like, they show up there, and they want the trailer. They want the money. Yep, they want the whole thing. Absolutely. And there's a lot of notoriety, too, especially for these kids that are uh, kind of tapping on the door of that next level. 
for sponsorship availability, and it does look good to say that you went to Vegas and you beat some of the top contestants throughout the nation. So, yeah. you, you know what? I, yeah, I mean, there's some men that, that tie calves there. <laughs> you know what uh, I like is the, the mannerisms. So, like when when some of them win or whatever it is, kind of their their theatrics. You know, and there's not a lot of t- rodeo on TV, so it's like, where are you getting this from? You know, where are you kind of gathering from? How you know the way the way tough, you know, spreads out his arms after he does his, Mm -hmm. after he wraps it up, you know, or whatever it is they they follow what they're seeing. And, you know, there's not today with social media, there's a lot of access to it. So it's nice to see this kind of this trickle down and now they're, they're, you know, they know the cameras are on basically. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Pretty nice. They're not doing the icky wood shuffle. No, but one of them could. Yeah. Uh, No one know what the (laughs) heck it is, but (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Uh, But I'll be honest. Some of these kids are starting their own trends too. You know, I mean, they, they pick up on stuff that they see on social media, but they they kind of set some of these trends as well. You know, I mean, because I, I honestly, when it comes to the history of rodeo, I think cowboys have been too stoic, and that's that kind of puts us behind. Yeah. You know, I mean, you see the NFL; they're they're getting lax on some of their celebration policies and stuff like that to make it fun. And I mean, we we need more Sid Steiners. You know, I mean yeah. those. Those those guys sold tickets, you know, and and no we need people to uh, to be animated. That's fun. I mean, yeah, that's what yeah. it's supposed to be anyway. The the Brink, the Luke Brink Quino shake, right? Yeah. Or some Wade oh, Sandels yeah, right. out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Caleb Bennett, yeah, Smiley pulling yep. back the bow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. no, for sure. So what is your is what is your move, uh, Mr. Godert? Yeah, I'm sure you have one established. I've got some, and uh, I've kind of I I try to keep them in the arsenal for anywhere from nine to 12 months and then I get rid of them and I plan on the next one. So I can't really talk about what's coming down the pipes for 2019, but it should be good. It should be pretty good. I think that you guys will be excited about it. So we're always looking forward to it. Absolutely. Always. Hey, real quick, go to yeah. the uh, auctions. Are you auctioneers? Are you, uh, you doing this, this summer, anything, what is one major one you're doing this summer? How about that? I, uh, the, uh, well, I like to sell chickens. Um, in the backyard here, but that's not really a major one. That's kind of a, a hobby deal. But uh, no, I, I I've currently I I'm in not really a full blown transition, but uh, I've scaled back a lot of the rodeo side of it, and I am focused back home for selling cattle, as you mentioned, um, and also competing for the Livestock Marketing Association, and they host the largest livestock uh, auctioneer competition throughout the world, and I've qualified. For that, so I'll be going down to uh, Tulare, California, um, on June 8th, I believe it is, uh, to compete there against the pretty much the best auctioneers for sure on the continent. We see a lot of guys from Canada and and the United States, but uh, it's well known. So I'll, I've got an opportunity to go there, and uh, that's kind of the highlight of my auctioneering side of it is to be able to compete with those guys. So oh, You awesome, know, man. we announced in the intro, right, that uh, Mr. Godert, the 2018 Rookie of the Year by Livestock Marketing Association, and also yeah. the 2019 yeah. bid-calling champion for the Montana Auctioneer Association. So yeah. you, yeah, you're doing something, dude. Right. You're, you, you didn't deal. just yeah. kind of <laughs> take a step sideways. You hit it hard. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the thing. I mean, this is the deal. It's like, I mean, and the the thing is about, and Andy can testify to this, announcing is so difficult because oh. that's one spot that they don't rotate in rodeo. I mean, you'll see your clowns rotate. You'll see your sound guys rotate. If a committee likes an announcer, and I mean, their retirement party is going to be held at their wake. I mean, and that's just how it is. Yep. So I have had, a, you know, I mean, I, for, I haven't had a lot of opportunities to get the rodeos that I was hoping for, and I have always been diverse. And I've always loved auctioneering, and I've done that since I was a kid. And so for the longest time, I was focused on, you know, up until the last couple of years, I was focused on primarily rodeo. And, you know, with, with my kids being as young as they are and kind of wanting to be home a little bit more, I focused on the auctioneering side of it. And so, yeah, I'm 38, and I'm a rookie, so it's no big deal. But, uh, that's just... <laughs> he said 38 it's awesome yeah <laughs> but hey man you know we hope that you all and as you said mr Godert, that you all look forward to coming to las vegas and we're so happy to have you here we're blessed to have the talent that we do with you guys and we know you put a lot of work into it and uh 
we're looking forward to 2019 Junior World Finals. Yeah, very much, man. That's awesome working with you guys, and this is a great conversation. <laughs> but sure. before we go, I appreciate it, man. before we go, Mr. Goder, what do you have to sell us? Yes. Come on. Oh, man. Come I on. Throw something out back. there. I am but a bit of 51, too. I am but a bit of 20, a bit of 53, a bit of 4, 54, a bit of 5, 5, 55, 6 here. So All right. Those are expensive chickens. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. <laughs> expensive we only have chickens. We ones up here in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Better be free range. <laughs> yeah, no, they are. Those are the brown eggs. <laughs> oh, man, that yeah. is too good. Well, thank so, you guys for it, man. He left a bunch of them. So. <laughs> all right, cool. Really appreciate it. And, yeah, thanks for thanks for all that you guys do. And, and I mean, all of this thing, I will say, I know that uh, you, you guys' job is to – get people of interest on the rodeo side but Bo you've done I mean I remember when you first talked about this seven or eight years ago and I mean Bo Gardner's the brainchild of this whole entire deal so without yep. your dream of this thing happening and then guys like Envy and the entire Las Vegas event uh, crew and having the faith on you know what what you saw so we really appreciate that and thank you to Las Vegas events for you know believing that there is a future in, in the younger guys and these young competitors. So it's really cool. And, and, you know, for myself, it's definitely been, been a great pleasure to work with you guys. Well, you nailed it. It's our future, you know, all of ours. So uh, we just got to keep the ball rolling and, and, yep. and thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you very well, much. And, and you guys are doing – you're doing things the right way. I mean, you can you can pay somebody to do a job, and we're glad that you guys do that for us, but you, you can't pay people to care, and, and yeah. you guys care. You know, and that's yeah. – that's something that shows through in the production that you've put together. I mean, there's, there's nothing that's, that's second rate. I, I mean, everything yeah. is to, to showcase what's going on with this sport and, and you guys are first class. He's just saying that because we bought him dinner the other night. <laughs> I thought we were still trying to get our contract. Oh, yeah. No, we already have those, Steve. I told you that. Okay. <laughs> Well, okay. thanks again, guys. We're going to wrap up here and really appreciate your time and all that you do. And, uh, again, we always look forward to seeing you down the road. Yeah, thanks, guys. Awesome. All right. Thank Adios, you. Adios, amigos. For more information about the Junior World Finals, visit NFRExperience.com. Hi, I'm Boyd Paul Hamus, and you're listening to NFR Extra. Hi, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner and chief executive officer of the D Las Vegas, and this is NFR Extra. Hi, I'm world champion Ryder Wright, and you're listening to NFR Extra. Tough Cooper is a four-time world champ and son of Pro Rodeo Hall of Famer Roy Super Looper Cooper. Welcome to the show, Tough. Yeah, thank you for having me. What's going on? <laughs> hey, dude, it's so great to have you on right now. It's uh, We know you're in the middle of the rodeo season, and I think you just ran some slack. How did that go? Uh, no money today, but yes, rodeo season 24-7. You know, we get a few weeks off after the NFR for Christmas, but it's right back to it. So, But that's one of the cool things about my job. It's 24-7. As much as you want to put in, it's what you're probably going to get out. Mm-hmm. And you make your own schedule. There's rodeos year-round. Is There's as much as you want to go to, and there's quite a few big ones. How do you feel health-wise? You feel good? He- health-wise. I'm 29 years old. <laughs> And Puppy. I am great. You know, it's, I am, yeah, we're, you know, we're right in the middle of, you know, like super youth and, you know, experience is what I like to call it. Yes. Oh, that's um, nice. You know, so, Forward. so now it's time to start, start, you know, getting more education on, you know, your future goals, you know, depending on how far, how far out you want your career to last. And, you know, you start managing your body and your health. And, you know, what take what you take in is probably what's going to come out. You know, it might not come out tomorrow, but it might come out next year or 10 years or 20 years down the road. So we're just kind of looking into stuff like that. Yeah. Perfect. Well, you know, that leads into this next question because it, it, it now appears that you're moving into that, that realm where you're, you're going to be competing for the all-around every year. I mean, yeah. it's, you're in that – you're one of those guys that's there and, you know, nothing's given, but it's all earned. And you've definitely put in the work, and, you know, I know you've come away with it, and there's a few things that you come up short, and it's a long season. So here's here's a quick question. Just kind of looking on the standings. No, it's early, but what are the chances that you're going to be um, competing against a rough stock cowboy for the all-around this year? Just, just I know it's early. Yes, uh, Stetson Wright. He yes. Is, this is his rookie year. He's amazing. I'm a big fan. Um, <laughs> he rides bulls and rides saddle bronc. Uh, I remember my first NFR – was uh, the year his dad won his first world title, and we both won a go-round. 
uh, at the NFR that year, the same night, and all these little kids, Stetson, you know, Ryder, yep. Rusty. Big family. They were all down there. Yeah, they were all down there in the back. And I, I remember asking Cody, I'm like, hey, are you going to let your kids ride Saddlebrook? And he was like, of course. You know, nice. and I'm like, well, are they already riding? And he's like, yeah. He's like, they want to every day. They're like four or five years old. And um, now they have – most of them ride uh, Saddlebrook, and one of them rides Bulls pretty darn good. So, yeah, we have a lot of uh, – a lot of a lot of good competition going on you know on that end of the arena it's going to be really cool for the fans that would make um, a great battle but, yeah. yeah wrangler and rough stock time <laughs> nice we, we need it stir yes, up the pot sir. a little bit right? yeah 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 so yeah. And, and you know trevor trevor's retired you know full-time rodeo uh, it's been so difficult you know to even challenge him within the all-around race you know, with his team rope and calf rope and steer rope. And it's, you know, it's not really been much of an option for many guys because it's so difficult, you know, to work so many events. You're seeing more guys, you know, pick up other events and get into it now that Trevor's kind of held back a little bit. Yeah, well, you guys have been best friends for a long time. You you practice together. You grow up together. You 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 share family homes. And, and it's just, just great camaraderie and competition between you guys. So. Yeah, absolutely. So I got another yes, question sir. for yes, you there. Uh, okay. So uh, yes. what is, I mean, all the rodeos, how many rodeos do you think you'll hit this year? Uh, this year? Yeah. The, I'll, I'll probably go to, I go to less than most uh, calf ropers do. Mm-hmm. Um, really, depending on the horsepower, you know, what you put in um, throughout the summer is the amount of rodeos, but I do have good horses this year. I have a, I have a, a lot of, I have more than just, you know, two, I have like four, four really good ones. I met um, one of your young ones at, uh, Logandale. Yeah. 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 It's at Logandale. Just yeah. a brand new one. Uh, yes. Yeah, so or Kurt Johnson owns them. He just started letting me ride them. Uh, really good horse, six years old. Uh, uh my good friend, James Barton trained him. uh, one junior AQHA world champion last year. And now he's, uh, going to pro rodeos with me. Hey, awesome tough. You horse. Had- you had some success at uh, Logandale, didn't you? Yeah, Logandale. That is, you know, one of my favorite rodeos. That's the first rodeo, first ma- big pro rodeo that I've ever won when I was 18 years old. So nice. it's a very special place to me. It's a great, uh, great community that supports rodeo. It's right north of Las Vegas. Love it. Absolutely love going out there every year um, to compete at one of the best rodeos of the year. Wow, it was great seeing there, Tup. And uh, how about large rodeos give us a, a one of your larger rodeos that you really enjoy competing at whether it's cheyenne frontier days or or rodeo houston or just throw one oh, out yeah there that's when you pull up to one of the larger rodeos and and you know you get to unload your horse and you know start the process of competing it's it, every time i pull up to one of those deals and i start that it's it's a blessing i just look back and just thank the lord of you know, how fortunate I am to get to do what I love to do at the highest level at these amazing events, you know, Cheyenne, uh, Pendleton, Calgary, you know, Houston, the American, and then of course, Las Vegas, you know, that's the, we have a little rodeo in Vegas. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah, That one, you know, that one, that one doesn't, it doesn't count because it's so good. Uh, (laughs) You don't have to butter us up. (laughs) <laughs> no, I mean, it's you, you really show up to these places, and you're so fortunate and blessed, you know, just to be able to get to do what I get to do for a living. It's amazing. I get to ride a horse and compete, you know, and wear a cowboy hat. It's it's I'm so fortunate to be in the position I am. It makes me want to work hard every day, you know, to continue to get to do what I love. And these rodeos are awesome. Well, you know, there's so many committee guys that put on great events and girls um, that put on great uh great events and we're so fortunate that we just get to show up as cowboys you know you're uh we can hear the passion coming out and we understand that this is your lifestyle who obviously has set the tone super looper yeah i mean you got quite a few titles there but who are some other gotten you just you get more out of them by learning being around them so what are some other uh the ropers that you uh yeah uh growing up in the family that i did my dad's really cooper eight time world champion the super looper good you know just so they could be you know, be in his presence and be able to have him teach them. So I, you know, Fred and Cody and Joe, you know, pretty much live. I thought, I thought all those guys just lived with us, you know, <laughs> and everybody spent all their time in the practice pen. So that's where, you know, I was drawn to, and my brothers were drawn to. So, you know, roping with all these guys, I'm I, within my family. I'm so fortunate because I have, you know, uh, Strand Smith. Uh, he's my uncle, Trevor Brazil, brother-in-law, you know, I got another world champion, Jimmy Cooper, 
my dad's cousin, you know, so much knowledge that has impacted me. I'm, you know, the, one of the younger guys within my generation of, of the family. So all the, all the knowledge is just coming down, you know, trickling down towards me and, you know, so, so fortunate to be able to travel with, you know, Trevor and Strand, uh, whenever I was young and because they were so experienced and, you know, so, so grounded and rooted to, you know, the, the word of the Lord and, you know, what really is meaningful to me and my family and with the principles of traveling and really, really helped my uh, foundation of, you know, where I've, where I've gone and, um, (laughs) <laughs> they've really kept me in line as much as they could. You know, I, I, uh, just like any, any kid, you know, we, well, wanna, when you're out traveling on the road, it's stuff. a little to get off. Yeah. Off yeah. The track. <laughs> yeah. When you're traveling at 18 years old, you know, out, you know, all year long, it's, it, you, it's, it's fun. You can have a good time, but you're also there to, for business, you know, at, as an 18 year old kid, have 10,000, you know, when we show up at Cody Wild, and we're like, we don't know. We've never experienced this. Mm-hmm. That we might be looking in the stands at other things as an 18 year old kid, but then you're also there for business. And I'm very fortunate to have, you know, my brothers, Cliff and Clint, you know, and Strand and Trevor, you know, be able to like, hey, focus on the start. Let's win something today. Then let's go do something fun. So during uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, are y'all guys all together? Kind of how big is that? NFL, yeah. you know? Thanksgiving is 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 a very big event in our house <laughs> because it is about you know it's about six to ten days away from the NFR every year, and it's it's a big day of eating, but also it's the practice session that day. That's cool. Is very meaningful. You know, we're we're in an intense practice session. You know, right right before the NFR, getting things lined out. It's a lot of fun. Watch a little bit of football, but. Also, uh, also make sure we have things lined out ready for Vegas. That is cool, man. What a great story, tough, yeah. great story, man. So, Junior World Finals 2019. The name yes, Tough Cooper is now on the plate, carrying on the family tradition that Mr. Roy Cooper Super Looper started with us probably five six years ago. Uh, we owe a great deal yes, of sir. gratitude to him and for you to carry that stick with you and uh, with the family and Dirk and Jennifer Webb. You know they they help you guys head that up and uh, so tell us I, I, what are you feeling about that? Oh, the the Junior World Finals it's absolutely amazing opportunity for these kids. Uh, you know from years old, well even younger than that, mm-hmm. all the way up to nineteen years old. Yeah. Um, age groups, boys and girls, rope and care. Amazing opportunity for them. You know, I, I'm so fortunate that you know, I, Dad, you know, let me take the reins over, and I get to uh, have I get to get to have my name in front of it. And I'm so fortunate with my connection, you know, partnership with Dirk and, and mm-hmm. with LVE. Mm-hmm. It, but the opportunity that you know that has been formed for these kids is is so awesome. It's because everybody in the industry is watching Vegas, is watching mm-hmm. NFR, and they always have. Mm-hmm. And now these kids get to compete all year long and qualify through a system that allows them to go out to Las Vegas and compete at their hour, you know, my, the Tough yep. World yep. Junior World Finals. And it's, mm-hmm. and it's an awesome opportunity for these kids. Uh, I remember when I was like, uh, I believe I was 10 years old when my dad made it far the last time. I remember going to uh, watch him compete, and he would be talking to all the uh, all the guys in Las Vegas. He's like, man, we need to competing i want to be competing while they're competing you know so it was a it was a goal and a dream of his you know for a long time and it took mm-hmm. took so long for vegas to during the nfr to you know get to where it was a uh, a kid you know a family friend friendly event mm-hmm. these kids are able to you know these parents come out to the nfr every year now they're bringing their kids and they're competing and they're watching the rodeo and they're experiencing all the great things that you know, the, the rodeo brings down mm-hmm. and they have a great time at it. You know, they, people are saving up all year long so they can come out and, you know, support their, uh, their, you know, 12 year old, you know, niece or nephew or yep. grandchild that may, they qualify for the FR and they're experiencing the same thing that my family gets to experience whenever I'm competing at the NFR. Yep. And then the, so, the letters and, and things that you guys receive, all the producers receive letters from, from these contestants with the Junior World Finals, I mean that just has to be so heartwarming. Oh, the absolute these kids are these kids are amazing. 
you know, they're, 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 they're just like, I want to be, it's just so grateful and just enjoying, you know, being a cowboy or a cowgirl. Yep. Yep. Wow. We're looking forward to this year. Tough. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. But you know, Hey, I want to ask yeah. a quick, we were talking about the guys that you're surrounded around. Some I've noticed with your career, you know, if you 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 mentioned you're 29, so obviously 30 is right around the corner. Um, I want to go to that party. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it seems like you're maturing in a way as you know you're you're seeing what you're representing for the the future rodeo, and Trevor seems to be rubbing off on you a little bit. Tough. Um, <laughs> I, yes, sir. <laughs> I uh, just uh, he was the consummate, consistent champion. And seriously, just from afar, you know, with the, the things that we could see, the highlights, you know, you you representing in, you know, season, every season long, something's coming together well, there, man. Like Tuff said, he, he set that strong foundation that really yeah. started things off down the right path. That's uh, mm-hmm. the sweet part about rodeo. Yes, it is. Well, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, and that's, that's what's so great about the Western industry. We, we do have the opportunity to, you know, pick the phone up and call Trevor or, you know, any of our heroes that, that we have and maybe go spend a little bit of time with them. And I'm fortunate that I get to spend every day, you know, with my family and Trevor that I, if I just get to spend five minutes around them, I know it's something good's rubbing off and it's going to impact my future for the better. So I try and keep my role models and heroes, uh, you know, I, I keep them to a high standard. Beautifully said, man. Well, uh, thanks for joining the show. This this was great, Tough. Fantastic. And we really do appreciate you taking the time out on the yeah. road to to have a small conversation with us. It means a lot to to our listeners to hear that all the qualities that uh, our cowboys represent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank y'all guys so much for having us. Thanks, um, Tough. Good luck down the road, my be friend. Seeing y'all here in a few months. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. We'll yes, be sir, there, brother. All right, man. <laughs> Stay up to date on the world standings. For the road to the NFR at NFRexperience.com. Howdy, I'm Bob Tolman, and this is NFR Extra. Hi, I'm world champion bull rider Sage Kimsey, and you're listening to NFR Extra. Good afternoon. My name is Cotton Ross from Marysville, California. Welcome to NFR Extra. Follow the NFR Extra podcast by visiting NFRexperience.com, NFRextra.vegas, And now on Spotify and SoundCloud. You're listening to the NFR Extra Podcast. All dirt, all rodeo, all year. And on this one, Maria got to sit down with the three-time world champ and the original Wrangler NFR general manager for the last 32 years, Mr. Sean Davis. This was recorded live at Cowboy Christmas on December 10th, 2018. Hi, I'm Maria Prekachis, and welcome to NFR Extra, where it's all dirt, all rodeo, all year. I am more than excited and thrilled to have the general manager of production for the National Finals Rodeo, Sean Davis, with me today. I know you're super busy, so I first have to thank you for coming by. Well, you're sure welcome. I love it. So, general manager of production, you have been the GM since it moved to Vegas 30 years ago. I mean, you love your job. I know it's tough. Tell me a little bit about the start and where it's come to. Well, of course, the start, when, when I first come here, I was a- actually the president, even though I, I was in charge of the man, uh, the uh, National Finals Road. I also had to run the convention and all the PRCA stuff at the same time. So the first manager that we named was John Burke. And then uh, the year after, uh, we co-managed it, and ever since then, I've been in charge of the National Finals Rodeo. Talk about the first year it was here. I mean, compared to now, 30 years later, where it's where it's come to. Well, of course, first year it was here, we had a lot of complications. I mean, in production, you didn't have two tunnels, so you had to bring everyone through the one tunnel. And, and, and not only did we have to bring them through the one one entrance there was a trash compactor in that entrance which we had to take everybody around and and we had to create what we called a moat and all the contestants had to come right through the corner of the arena and into the moat and go to the other end so uh, to get everybody moving and so on it was it was a, a real challenge and we had to uh, you know to uh, have a lot of people directing traffic so 30 years ago besides the complications what was this like 
Well, you know, of course, there was a lot of challenges, lots of unknowns. Uh, to go back, if you want to talk about the dirt, there, you know, in most places you can find dirt that basically you can, uh, that fits the situation. Here we had to mix everything. We had a plan. We had to go out there. I was out in the, you know, at that time it wasn't convenient with your, with your uh, uh, dirt supplying company. So, so we actually had to mix all that and make those plans. There was no, nothing that we uh, was simple or easy because it was a basketball court. Uh, uh, quite a bit smaller than we've been used to and we had the entrance concerns and it was uh, we had to do a lot of planning to make it happen and then in a city like this we didn't know that we had to meet the challenge of the entertainment dollar so at, at that time we even that's when we really started de developing front ends. Well what's been the key to getting it to where it is now the growth and development? Well I, I think the key is cooperation and, and a goal that we all had. You know, when I made the decision, I, I knew that Rodeo would have stayed uh, in Oklahoma, even though Oklahoma had done a great job of bringing it to where it was, it wasn't going to advance to the point that I hoped it would here. Uh, in, in, my, in my decision, of course, I'd done a lot of investigation and, and I was pretty country to take on the city of Las Vegas. So that's why I incorporated uh, the help of Benny Binion and, uh, and I had a lot of confidence in Benny because when he gave me his word of what was going to happen, uh, I figured it would happen and it did. Well, you were the deciding vote over 30 years ago to bring it to Vegas instead of staying in Oklahoma City. There were some people who were not really thrilled with you. I mean, that took a lot of confidence, a lot of you-know-what, to make that decision and stand by it. Well, I'm sure I wouldn't have won any elections in Oklahoma, but the, the situation was it wasn't that I didn't appreciate what Oklahoma did. It was a thing that I thought that rodeo that I had to do to uh, make the decision for the good of the sport. I also knew at that time that Las Vegas was pretty sh uh, empty in the, the uh, month of December, which meant all focus would be on the rodeo. And so it proved out. But you know, the first two years, we had plenty of seats. You know, we, we only had 12,500 in, in Oklahoma City. We had 7,500 here. And uh, they weren't filled till the third year. But the third year when that, they always asked me what was some of my most exciting moments. And that was one of them when they were all filled. So you're going to retire from being the general manager. Boyd Paul Hamas is going to try to fill some very large shoes. So how does that feel? I mean, I know you've known Boyd for years. You all hired him because you thought he'd do a great job. How does that feel to retire and pass the baton on? Well, pa passing it on, I think that we've chosen the right person. I, I have lots of confidence in Boyd. Boyd was destined to be here. Uh, situation, how Boyd got here is we were doing the grand entry rehearsal and uh, Bob Tallman and Phil Gardenhire were out somewhere. They, they weren't there and I looked at Jimmy Powers and I said, I, you don't know who somebody can announce because either, either that or I'm going to announce this. And they said, that skinny kid up there is a good announcer. And I brought him down and he's been here ever since. Well, we're all excited to see and you're mentoring him along and someone said, well, he can't be Sean Davis, he needs to be Boyd. And I think that's great advice. Yeah. So let's talk about your career. World champion, not once, not twice, but three times. How'd you get into rodeo? Oh, uh, as long as I remember, I wanted to be the world champion cowboy. And, uh, you know, that's from the time I was two years old. And I just went through all, all the ranks. That time you didn't have, you had high school rodeo, you had 4-H rodeo, you didn't have a lot of junior rodeo, but I, I uh, would practice at the neighbors, my parents weren't very enthused about my rodeo career. I practiced, I practiced at the neighbors, and uh, and and enter rodeos. Uh, and uh, for some reason, I was lucky. I could always ride, and I started winning. I actually started winning by the time I was 13 years old. Money, and uh, at one time, I doubled my earnings each year up until I was about till I won my first world championship. Is there a difference between buckle one, two, or three? They have to be very sweet. You know, bu buckle one was was great, but I've I've learned since then that maybe I would I, I expected more people to realize that I won a buckle. <laughs> I I was all thrilled about it, but I look around, uh, you know, a after you won the buckle, it was great in the championship, but then uh, 
two months after the next season starts, very few people remember who the champion was. So with that, uh, I appreciated all my buckles. Well, and you set the single season saddle bronc riding earnings record, $25,599. Today it's well over one, two, and sometimes three hundred thousand. But that was a lot of money back then. Well, I can tell you what that year when I bought and still had money left, uh, I bought I bought an airplane and a Cadillac and still had money left, so that that'll give you some idea. Holiday Inn was eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. So you went on three buckles, you went on to be very involved in rodeo, but Coaching was important to you, and you were the coach at College of Southern Idaho. And you have, I go down there a lot, and there's the whole arena's named after you, your name's on the wall. How important was the coaching part of your career in rodeo? Well, it, it, it was important. Uh, I think that, uh, of course, when I took the job at the College of Southern Idaho, I never had a job except working in the fields, you know, and then in rodeo. And when I went there, I asked all the wrong questions. And when I got my first paycheck, uh, I looks at my paycheck and I only got a third or a third less than I thought I was going to. So I calls over there and they said, "Well, did, did you count this and you take the taxes out and did you take the uh, the uh, re retirement out and so on?" I said, oh, "Well, no, <laughs> I didn't realize I got all that." And so that, was, but it was somewhat. And the other thing is, when I got there, uh, I again I didn't know I didn't have a budget to run the program on. I had a beautiful building, but I didn't have a budget. So being put under them circumstances, I had a set of Powder River cattle pens that, was, that I could make a rena out of, and they bought me a set of bucket chutes. And uh, I suppose if I had to do it all over, uh, you know, I, I, I said, well, if you ain't got a budget, you haven't got me. But, but I, I didn't, I just got on the phone, called a lot of my people, which weren't from Idaho, and made them deals and they furnished me money to, to buy bucking stock and, and scholarships and so on. And uh, in, in three years, when I first went to the College of Southern Idaho, the athletic did not, department did not want anything to do with the rodeo programs. In about three years, they wanted me in the rodeo programs, but I made them a deal that I, could, I would like to be in the athletic department but I kept my budget and they kept theirs. So me, in, in the students of the College of Southern Idaho, they knew how to do everything from sell scholarships, do security, put on a rodeo, and plus they were great competitors. What was the most rewarding part of teaching these kids and coaching them? Well, when they call me now and tell me how it affected their lives. A few people on this show have already taught, more than a few have talked about, we went to CSI because Sean Davis was coaching. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, that's appreciated now and, and then. So you're retiring semi. My first question is, how do you sleep? Because you're also in the racehorse business. Oh yeah, you know, I've never required my sleep. I go to the racetrack every morning at four o'clock, you know, and then I come back. And the trouble is sometimes I, you know, in, in Arizona where we spend the winters, you know, it's an hour drive both ways. So, so uh, you know, I, I do spend quite a bit of the time, then, then I have to come back and work on the national finals and, and my other other projects. But uh, it does keep me busy. I don't I don't uh, have any trouble finding activities. You don't. So explain what you do in the racehorse industry. Well, I've always had this as a hobby, and you know, it started back as the time I was a kid, and then and then when we uh, decided to go to Idaho, we basically. Uh, Gina, my wife, had ridden jumping horses, and we lived there in in. in uh, Flower Mound, Texas, and uh, Bunker Hunt Ranch was about, uh, oh, four or five miles from us, and the ranch manager went to our church, and he couldn't find anybody to help break a bunch of the Bunker Hunt's yearlings, and I had a boy that come and, and uh, to work for me that was then a lot, had a lot of experience at the racetrack and breaking horses, so anyhow, they hired uh, Gina and Garth was his name. They went over and helped break those horses. And when we left there, Gina's uh, aunt and uncle were in the racehorse business. And they gave us a mare and we bred it to Bunker, a, a Bunker Hunt Stallion. And that colt was born in our backyard in Idaho. And she, she, she won her first out with Gary Stevens riding her. Uh, so that's how we got started. And it's a hobby, but it's turned into more than that. In your semi-retirement, what's a day going to look like for Sean Davis? 
<laughs> but, pardon me. What's a day going to look like? A typical day going to look well, like? You, you know, there's other things because because uh, you know we have other places and other interests too. Uh, we're going to maybe do some things uh, with some of the family more so, but also a day in Sean Davis's racehorse is just going to stay the same, you know. And by the time you do all the charting and all the planning and investigations and, and look at, looking for the horses to run and everything, it, it'll still, I, I won't, uh, I, I don't know if I'll gain any more time than I've already got, but it'll, it'll be something that th this will be missed. But uh, but something that I wanted to do and, and and put more time into. Well, let's turn back to the NFR. So, rodeo in general, where do you think it's going, and where do you want to see it go? Well, of course, you know, I think Boyd, you know, is the person that that, and and he's into more of the modern uh, uh, things of you know the streaming and the things like, like that he's into that big time and I think that's kind of the direction that but I, I think they always have to remember about the NFR they're here to see the rodeo I, I, we put some fancy things around it but if it wasn't for the contestants and the bucking stock and and uh, the rodeo itself and I think they always have to keep to the theme that John Van Conkright, uh suggested when they first started the cowboy is to is do his two seconds or 30 seconds of glory and all attention focused on him in the arena and I've always tried to keep that uh, so nothing interfered with the contest and if the void keeps that because the people are still here even though they're they love everything around it they're here still here to see the rodeo and I think that he'll advance it into the more te technical things. But the other thing that I'm going to say, and, and, and uh, I really think that the NFR needs a format change. And I've thought this for several years. And, and, and I think the National Final Rodeo needs to be like other sports. So you qualify in the first nine rounds and you have, have a sudden death playoff at the end. And, and that way, everybody can follow and you have we've always said it's going to be the Super Bowl of rodeo well th that creates Super Bowl day in the city of Las Vegas I get it so I have a couple personal questions for you how'd you meet your lovely wife Gina because all that you have done all these years she's been by your side how'd you two meet well I, I met, her, met her at the Fort Worth rodeo and uh, we communicated and dated for about three years and then we were married and we, we it's a, it's a long story, but we it, uh, it went went to Europe uh, on our honeymoon, and and then we lived. She had an apartment. She was an airline stewardess for Eastern Airlines. And she had an apartment in Miami, and we had a home in Texas. And she'd fly just enough to keep her job, so give us free airline passes. And Gina's always Gina's always enjoyed herself, and and stayed out of my business, and and she's always been very supportive. Well. Your son Zane, now your grandkids. How great is it to be a grandfather? Well, you know we we, we love them. You know, I mean, uh, and they've been a real. We've had we had two perfect grandchildren, and the third one is a character. So, and she she's just little and so on. But we really enjoy them. Uh, Gina's never growing up, so she still does rides the, rides all the roller coasters and, and takes them everywhere that they want to go. And they are somewhat expensive, but we, we can't spend our money any other way. That's what they say every grandparent should. Yeah. All right, and then I just learned not so long ago, your nickname, I ran into some old, um, some older folks that you were the coach, and they said, oh, say hi to Buck Snort. Yeah. And I went, what? What is that nickname from? Well, it's, there is a little, there's, there was a cowboy that rode you by the name of Mike Isley. And he used to call me Shawnee Buck Mormon. And so we were at Calgary and there was a, a, a friend of mine that rodeoed. He actually got kicked and killed in the saddle bronc riding from, from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And his name was Art Riley. And he said, uh, hey, Buck Snort. And it was a bad day for me. And I said, I'll Buck Snort you, you. <laughs> and it stuck ever since. <laughs> that was right before I came to the NFR this year, yeah. and I said, "Okay, I'm interviewing him. I have to ask him." Yeah. What's when you look back on your life and your career, and you still have a long ways to go, my friend? What What do you hope people remember or think about you now that you're retiring from the NFR? And, and what would you hope 
that someone would say about you, your legacy? Well, and the NFR, of course, is a job I never planned on having, but 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 I hoped that they would think that but what I've accomplished and set set standards at the NFR is had a, played a great importance on the direction of how rodeo is received, and that I was able to do something for the Cowboys that might not have been done financially, and also uh, give some direction to the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Well, I know you're still going to be around the NFR, but we will miss you day-to-day -day operations for sure. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's so much fun to sit down and talk to you during this busy time. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Sean Davis, been here. The reason it is here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the NFR, and it's right here on NFR Extra, where it's all dirt, all rodeo, all year. Follow the NFR Extra podcast by visiting nfrexperience.com, nfrextra.vegas, and now on Spotify. Hi there, I'm Frank Thompson from Cheyenne Frontier Days, and you are listening to NFR Extra. Hi, I am Benny Butler, and you're listening to NFR Extra. Hi, I'm eight-time world champion bull rider Donnie Gay, and you're listening to NFR Extra. Hi. I'm Louis Messina, and you listen to NFR Extra. James Miller is the first general manager of the Red Bluff Roundup in over 97 years. That's, that's some years, man. Glad he's not that old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Red Bluff Roundup is a unique rodeo that has been around since the 1920s and is known as the America's largest three-day rodeo. Still don't know how they got to that point, but it's nice. James' wife, 2017 world champ barrel racer, Nellie Miller, who set a record for the fastest total time on 10 runs at 137 seconds. NV, that's about 13.7 seconds per run. Yeah, it is. And she did it on her horse sister. Ooh. And oh, wait, did wait. we mention she's a UNLV rebel? Go Rebels. Welcome. This is the fourth, fourth episode. episode. Wow. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, right now we have a, a great couple here. Uh, uh, let's uh, rodeo royalty, if you will. Uh, absolutely. Right? Um, uh, we have joining us right now James and Nellie Miller. Yes. Uh, Usually I, it's Nellie and James. I don't know how you messed that my, up. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, you, first of all, you two just got done wrapping up the Red Bluff Roundup. How are you feeling? How are you winding down? How's everything going? And congratulations! Yes. You know, obviously, Nellie, you uh, pulled out a big first place. And uh, Sir James, man, what a what a terrific produced rodeo! I thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, thank you. It was uh, it was definitely great weather, great attendance. Um, we brought in probably the six best stock contractors that we could bring in, and and had a match between you know the best contestants out there and, and the best stock. And the scores definitely proved it. We had bucking stock of the year last year. At least two of the animals here in our Sunday performance. I mean, it was. It was one heck of a show for sure. Yes, it was. And you know, if Sage would have rode that that bull on his last ride on Sunday, all the stock contractors were saying that would have been a hundred and ten. Oh wow. Yeah. Really? Yes. He just you Jeez. know, Sage Sage just needs to learn how to ride without hands. That's what he needs to do. <laughs> <laughs> Nelly, can you help him with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm good at that. <laughs> So, hey, listen, um, James, this is uh, always a question that we ask a lot of the rodeos. Um, if you had one thing to change for the three, four-day production that you had there, what, what would that be for the Red Bluff Roundup? You know, it makes it pre it's a pretty tough question. I mean, there's definitely a few little things that we want to try to uh, try to streamline a little bit easier, make things flow a little bit better. Um, we're, we're pretty critical on ourselves and, and see some of the things where, where we're losing some time. And I think that's one of our biggest things for next year and, and approaching that 100th anniversary of is how can we make this performance streamline with, without that's any That's right. That's right. You were at 98, time. right? That was the 98th performance of the Roundup? Yes, sir. That was uh, our 98th anniversary. Yeah, and, wow. and like we said, you know, we're, we're planning for this 100th because we it's going to be a – uh, as, as Reno Rodeo says, it's a big damn deal, but I think it's going to be a bigger damn deal. <laughs> and and I noticed they were on your uh, your list of attendees. 
They were. Yeah. Reno Rodeo Committee is, uh, they definitely come by and, and they want to watch what we do because they need to bring back something to Reno in order to try to That's be right. as good as we are. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Love the competition. That is fantastic. Yeah, actually, that jumps into, that actually goes into something we want to ask you. So, uh, what makes Red Bluff Roundup America's largest three day rodeo? Is it the prize money, the fans, the number of competitors? James, what is it? What makes it? Yes. What, what's, what's, that? what's the largest part yes. of this? You know, the, I think the, the where we where we, you know, it's the amount of spectators that we had. We had thirty two thousand five hundred sixty one spectators this year. Um, so it's definitely increasing the amount of attendance that we have. But we're a destination road, attracting people yes, from twenty six different states across the country. Internationally, we're attracting people from five different countries. So, um, it, man, it's definitely uh, we're growing, and uh, and I think that's why we're classified as the largest three-day rodeo in the country. NV, this is all about rodeo, too. I mean, they they don't have a fair, a festival, a That's concert. This is all about rodeo. Love it. Yeah. That's, I love that. That's uh, I like all the other stuff, but, I, man, rodeo, yep. no distractions. Let's get it on. So a long run of the Red Bluff Roundup is the wild ride. And, boy, did I get a fir- front row seat for that. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed it. But, uh what exactly, explain to everybody what exactly is the Wild Ride, and why did it take you close to 75 years to make this happen? Well, the Wild Ride, uh, I mean, is, is an event that Cotton Roster had brought to Red Bluff. And it was a time of when Red Bluff was televised on TV, and we had a final round, and television wanted us to be in a certain amount of time, and our fans here felt like they were getting ripped off and, and didn't get to see 20 head of bucking stock, so... <laughs> Cotton thought this would be a great idea to go ahead and add into it and, and definitely get some excitement and entertainment, and, and it's definitely done that for Red Bluff, and it seems like that's one of the things that Red Bluff is, is really well known for. Yep. Um, a lot of other rodeos have tried to copy it and, and it not has not been as, as successful as what we have, but the uh, contestants that come here, they dress up in costume and, and ride a ride a bucking horse, and and it seems like every year they're coming up with their own costumes and, and they kind of think about it and plan about it, plan for it before they get here. And, and you never know what you're going to see. I mean, so how uh, impressive was Mary Poppins? It looked amazing. I thought Mary Poppins was definitely for him. And it was <laughs> glad, glad Mary Poppins won, but that was definitely the best one, uh, the best the best costume that we've It was here. the best ride and the best costume. <laughs> uh, James, yeah, do you... To be able to ride a bucking horse holding the umbrella the whole way, that was, that was impressive. So i got a question. How do you integrate that into the marketing as, uh, on the side of social? I see all the the rides, yeah, the yeah, images, yeah. and they're awesome. Like it just, But do, do you just use that at all? Yeah, we, we use it as our marketing. I mean, because you, as you can see, the Wrangler Network does a great job of streaming our rodeo online and and when they hi- do a highlight reel of just the wild ride, you know, they'll get a half a million views of it. So that's their number it, one it, watched it, video for the whole year. Yeah, that's is what this Sam Dunn told us. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, yeah, man. What a great, what great job. See. Thank you. You know, and then I, so there's another thing I was reading about this, this, um, this rodeo is that there's a guy by the name of Don, and excuse me if I, I mess up his name, Don Tate, alias. Montana, Montana Red. Red. Can you? Sh- what, who is this guy? Because there's not much information about him, but he's credited with a lot of the creativity that started this rodeo uh, close to 100 years ago. Where does he? Where does he fall in the equation of it? James, what do you know about this? Yeah. Well, Don Don said uh, he became the traveling advertising man and traveled throughout ah. the West. Uh, he had a saddle on his hood um, of his car promoting the, the roundup. And it was just, you know, something that was, I think, needed to happen. And, it, you know, it gave people a different view of the rodeo. And he did a great job of advertising and promoting the rodeo. It, is, now, is that why you guys do that? The caravan or whatever you do throughout the city there, where people have the yeah, saddles so we, and the cars? And, yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's kind of part of what it was. And, you know, they'd go ahead and travel to different bars and businesses and, and have their megaphone and, and have that saddle on the car bring livestock into the bars i mean and help promote the rodeo and and the roundup and stuff wow no that's cool very very cool so james and nelly we see you guys out at several other rodeos and events and uh so want to know what's your mission are you looking for new trends to take back to red bluff just like kind of reno did with you or maybe you're just supporting your wife nelly 
Maybe both. Could be both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's definitely, it's definitely a little of both. I mean, I'm there helping support my wife also, but you know, the other thing is, is I think working with other rodeo committees, we're always looking for something that, that maybe works for them and, and maybe we could bring it back to Red Bluff or share what we do with the other rodeo committees. Yep. I mean, we're all in this as a, as a family and, oh, I and I know there's plenty of rodeo committees that call me daily and, and we all communicate and, and what we could do to help each other out. I mean, this is a great sport, but the other part of being there is, is supporting Nelly and then also with my position on the executive council for the PRCA. Nelly, is he worthy of the support? Yeah, he's a pretty hard worker. He's always doing something and always doing whatever he can to help me along the way so to be able to do it together. Um, you know, it's just, it really works well his position and mine yep we've seen you guys in action and we definitely see the the relationship that's very very awarding yeah no that's a shared passion Mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing Mm -hmm. real quick i'm gonna back up into the the uh, rodeo real quick so i was reading that that you're the first general manager in what uh 97 97 years years? what how did how did that come about what's that story yeah well it'd be let's see i guess it would be 90 uh Four years. Well, I would be okay. the first man. <laughs> I was off, off three years. All right. Just so, go ahead and correct you both. <laughs> yeah, um, of course. Yeah, it, it was uh, definitely interesting, and, and it's been challenging at times to become the first general manager of the Red Bluff Roundup. Uh, you know, I report to about a 15 man board and, and have 15 different personalities, but I think it's been very good for the Red Bluff Roundup, and I think the directors and everybody else would, would agree. Uh, they needed they needed a little bit of leadership and and it's becoming such a big business that you sure. need to have full time mm. staff here taking care of it. How many on your staff, James? Um, right now we have four full time employees, and then during our during our peak season during rodeo time we pull in some interns and volunteers. And, and volunteers, we are we're running about three hundred and fifty volunteers. Nice. Um, in order to put the whole entire rodeo on with paid personnel and everything, there's about 1,500 people that helps that helps put this put this rodeo on. Wow! Wow! Fantastic! That's Great sweet. job! Great job! Yeah! Congratulations! That's so, Miss Nelly, Thank you're you. just sitting there, and we have a boatload of questions for you. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Envy, this one's yours. Yeah. So, uh, coming from the UNLV rodeo team, Nelly. And I and I know this because as I'm an alumni as well. It, the but for you a little different. You're walking class. You're doing things, but you're walking by the Thomas and Mack Center, yes. right? And to the folks there, you know that are not rodeo related, Rebel basketball, all the other things that happen there. But but for you, that's the mecca of rodeo, and you're walking by it every day. So, could you describe the feeling you had when you had that first run inside the Thomas Mack Center as a pro rodeo contestant? They and, call it the tunnel. The, yes, sorry, right. out of the tunnel. Yes, <laughs> that was actually a good conversation we had with yeah. Mooney about that. Yeah, could, describe the feeling. Like, just expand on it because I'm sure it was pretty emotional. Uh, it definitely was. You know, as a college rodeo kid at UNLV, we sold raffle tickets at the mm-hmm. rodeo every night. Yeah, <laughs> and so we would peek through the doors and watch, get a glimpse of the rodeo every night. And it's just, you know, I think every every kid wants to be there and to actually have that come to reality a few years later, it was pretty surreal. And I just, I'll never forget that first grand entry I rode in that arena. It was so rewarding. Um, and it was just a great feeling. So you had a routine, right? So you stayed at somebody's house, you and James, and then tell us, tell us what your night was like. Um, yeah, we had a, um, so we rented a house. So sure. We were like, it's great. We, you know, it was nice to be able to have that quiet time and we'd just hang out at the house, but we would drive into the rodeo each night and, uh, start getting ready for the rodeo. And it's, that's kind of my favorite part of the day is pulling into the rodeo and just relaxing and getting into your routine with your horse. Yep. You know, I had a conversation with James and he said those exact words. So I just want to make sure you guys are on the same page <laughs> about that being your favorite time of the day when you pulled into the Thomas and Mac in the rig and you just had your little quiet time there. So I, I, I just think that's a great, great story to share. 
You know, and the other, okay, <laughs> so on top of that, not only did you get a first run, you had a few runs, yes. and then so good that uh, I'm pretty sure you came home as a world champ back in 17. How did that feel on top of just peeking in the curtains and looking what was going on? Now you're a world champ. Like, how, I mean, seriously, how did that feel? Um, it's amazing, and I still, you know, it's just hard to believe, honestly, because growing up you know that's something we all hope and wish for but it's a it's not easily attainable and i just feel really lucky that it happened to me i think there was a little more than just luck there's a lot of work that goes into this slightly right yes. yeah so and yeah, we we saw some like of that, that work yeah yeah we saw some of that work uh, actually in Red Bluff, where you came away with first place in the barrels, and you also competed in breakaway. Tell us about your decision to do that. Throwing rope. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, they had the breakaway last year as well, so this is the second year that okay. Red Bluff has had it at their rodeo. And last year, I didn't enter it, and I was so upset with myself for not entering. So I've been planning on entering this for a whole year just oh, because, nice. <laughs> because I didn't last year. And so um, it was just really fun. You know, it's kind of a nice distraction or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. away from barrel racing. It's nice to do something different for a change, and I've always loved roping. And so it's just it was just really fun. How did you end up? Uh, so we ended up third in the average, and I placed in the second go around. Uh, so it was really rewarding for me. I haven't roped very much in, uh, since college, so we kind of had to brush up on our our practice session, but um, it was fun. So when did you start throwing a rope, Nellie? Um, I probably, uh, honestly, probably started roping before I ran barrels. My my dad was a roper, oh, wow. and he, we've always just done it as a family, and so I've roped for a long time. Now, is this something you plan on teaching James? <laughs> 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 yeah, I've got a few tips for him. He likes when I give him suggestions. <laughs> hey, Nelly, I kind of... Thanks, Bo. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? Switch back to, to James real quick. James, how does it feel, you know watching Nelly compete and we're talking down to let's just say less than 20 seconds every night during the NFR where are you at and what are you feeling when you're watching your wife make her run I mean what's going on with you at that time well I'm the responsible one that's sitting in the stands taking care of the kids is where I'm at most of the time <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's definitely uh it's definitely nerve wracking, I would say, and and I know my wife doesn't get excited whatsoever, and and she's pretty cool, calm, and collective. So, me on the other part, it's a little bit different, uh, but we, we we get through it. But wow, he's you, a little bit nervous. <laughs> Someone's got to be in the relationship. Nervous right? about being around the kids, or <laughs> nervous about your run? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, Nelly, I'm gonna. This is kind of a. This is a topic I see a lot on our social media. And um, to, from what I understand, you're a very hard worker uh, behind the scenes to get things done. Saw it in action. Yeah. Saw it in action. You know, I always see this this, this kind of these comments. And it's not about you, but I just see it in, in relevance of barrel racing. But th I, I, I see this kind of reference. It's the horse. It's the horse. It's not the rider. It, you know, it's, it's not the horse. Or, I mean, it's not the rider. It's the horse. And, and tell me this. Is it the horse or is it the rider? What? What makes, well, yourself a champion and what you think or what you believe in the barrel race and champion? Like, how does that, where's your take on that? Um, yeah, I don't think it's either, you know, I think we're equally responsible for the success. You know, I wouldn't be here without the horse and the horse wouldn't be here without me. So it's just a total teamwork combination. And um, you do have to have a great horse underneath you, but you also have to follow it up with hard work. And so I just I don't think it's really um, either or. It's definitely just both and the teamwork and the bond between the horse and rider. So, Nellie, when you say hard work, all right, that could mean a lot of things. So what all do you do in a day to take care of this horse 
and make sure that you get the top performance out of this horse uh, each and every run? Um, I think it just gets down to really knowing your horse. Um, each horse is different. Each horse has different needs. And the the rider needs to be aware of what they need at a certain time. So, I mean, I just, and I, I think it comes a lot with experience. I've learned in, throughout different horses and different experiences that what they need at the time. And so I think it's just a lot of um, being in tune with that horse. Yeah. Nice. So cool. you're, you clean stalls, right? You feed the horses. You take your horses to the vet or the, maybe the vet comes to your place. And, and so, so you have a, a daily routine. So how often are you, are you actually on the horse, horseback, riding, exercising, practicing patterns, or just maybe on a, you know, just in a round pin? I, I don't know. Tell us kind of what your exercise routine is. Yeah, when I'm at home, I, I'm usually out every day riding, and uh, sister gets rode pretty much every day unless I unless we're traveling a lot or she gets tired or something. I'll give her a day off or something, but uh, generally I'm out there riding or doing something that uh, horse related. So I'm going to jump back to Red Bluff again. Okay, I'm just like I said, zingers. <laughs> <laughs> so Nellie, is it true that you're the first Red Bluff Roundup All-Around Champion, first women to win this title? Is that is that somewhat true? Is that did you, you get a special award for this? Yeah, it is true. I won the All-Around this past weekend, and I was the first woman to do that in 98 years. So it was really. Um, do we have one I of those fan happy. cheering buttons we can push right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, our board's really small. We do, do not have that ability, but wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Very, 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 very impressive. Yeah, that was yeah. good. Yeah, it was a really special win, especially being, you know, hometown rodeo and all of our family around here. And it was just really special for us. So when you walk into the green barn or, or the, the roadhouse, they just – you know, you don't have to wait to be seated. They just, you just kind of walk up to your own <laughs> table, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Hey, this is the last one. And I, we didn't have this set up for you. And this is more, we were talking about college. And as you know, uh, we, we have the junior world finals. Yeah, and yeah. how important is the college finals rodeo as well as the youth movement for rodeo? I mean, did you have a lot of this? when you were growing up yeah, and then yeah sure. and what, what does this do for the overall business right now I, yeah i think it's very important you know the young kids are the ones that are going to be coming up after us and so i think we need to do all we can to promote those younger events and get them involved at an early age because it's a great sport and i just don't want to see it go away you know if we need those young kids to keep it going and i have several great opportunities as a kid but there are even more now um and so it's just it's really fun to watch these kids go and have these different opportunities beautifully said yeah thank you that was a perfect response yes well this is uh this has been a very educational uh uh podcast right here learn a lot see james i told you it's gonna be painless (laughs) super sweet yeah (laughs) (laughs) well uh, we want to thank you two for coming on. This was uh, this was really good, and the, the info was uh, fantastic. And our listeners, you know, they're learning more and more with what we're doing with this show, and, and you guys are an testament to that. Couldn't do any of this without you guys. Yeah. I mean, thank you thank very, you. very much. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Yeah. James yeah. and Nellie Miller. You know, all, all goes well for you, Nellie, and seeing you uh, come December in Las Vegas. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rusty Wright, and this is NFR Extra. Hi, I'm Caleb Bennett, and this is NFR Extra. Hello, everyone. This is Benji Bendeley, Wrangler National Finals Rodeo Music Director, and this is NFR Extra. Hi, That's I'm a wrap Wright, for episode two-time four world of NFR Extra. Saddle Bronc Rider, you want to get this is train. NFR Extra. Steve Godin and Andy Seiler, the boys, all great dudes, for joining us on the Rodeo News of the Week. Tough Cooper for sharing his family's vision and a lot of other stuff <laughs> and their involvement of the youth rodeo movement. 
and Red Bluff Roundup, James and world champ Nellie Miller, for coming on the show. Oh, what a thrill that was, interviewing them guys. And as always, we want to thank Miss Maria Precage and her guest, the infamous three-time world champ and the NFR general manager for the last 32 years, the original Sean Davis. Man, he's the man. Join us in two weeks when Maria talks to world champ Jacob Crawley and Bose Bull, the Rodeo News of the Week, is joined by Randy Corley. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> great voice, great guy, great all around everything. Thanks. Gotta make it out the back where the big boys roam with the rovers and the racers and the bulls and the browns and the ladies in the skin tight wrangers and the cowboy hat.